Hey everyone, it's Pacific. As always, just a few quick notes before this week's episode. First, if you want to support the show, consider visiting survey.lipson.com slash SCP archive. There you can take a quick anonymous survey that'll help advertisers find our show. Additionally, you can visit us at patreon.com slash SCP underscore POD. There you can get access to bonus episodes, hear your name in the credits, and chat with us. Also, did you know we have a Discord and a Facebook fan group? If you're interested in joining either, check the link in the descriptions below. There you can chat with other listeners, in addition to some of the creators and actors and other creative forces behind the show. Look forward to having you. And last but certainly not least, this week's patrons. A big shout out to Justin Y, Ryder Brown, Liz, Kitty Katzy, and N.T. Kosh. Thanks, guys. Your support means the world. And now, without further interruption, this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number. SCP-096. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-096 is to be contained in its cell. A 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure SCP-096's presence inside the cell. Any and all photos, video, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. and O5- Description. SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. SCP-096's jaw can open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether SCP-096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions, and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-096 is normally extremely docile, with pressure sensors inside itself indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately one to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point be referred to as SCP-096-1. Documented speeds have varied from 35 kilometers an hour to kilometers an hour. It seems to depend on distance from SCP-096-1. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-096's progress. The actual position of SCP-096-1 does not seem to affect SCP-096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-096-1's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. Upon arriving at SCP-096-1's location, SCP-096 will proceed to kill and SCP-096-1. 100% of cases have left no traces of SCP-096-1. SCP-096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat. Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, 
including breach of foundation secrecy and large civilian loss of life. Retrieval of subject should be considered alpha priority. Doctor has also petitioned for immediate termination of SCP-096. Termination order has been approved and is to be carried out by Dr. on audio log from interview 096-1. Interviewer, Dr. Interviewed, Captain, Retired. Former Commander of Retrieval Team Zulu-9-A. Retrieval Incident 096-1-A. It always sucks ass to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up. And you're lucky if they can even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag. Didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Could you describe the mission, please? Yeah. Sorry. We had two choppers. One with my team and one on backup with Zulu 9B and Dr. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, else he would have taken us out then and there. Your report says SCP-096 didn't react to the cold. It was negative 15 degrees Celsius. Actually, it was, uh, minus... And yes, it was butt-naked and didn't so much as shiver. Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal Lee got ready to bag it. That's when Dr. Qu***y called. I turned to answer, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned, and my whole squad saw it. That's when SCP-096 entered an agitated emotional state? Yeah. Sorry, got the willies for a second. That's all right. Yeah, well, never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for it up the ass. Could you describe it a little more, please? Yeah, yeah. It, uh... It started screaming at us, and crying. Not animal roaring, though. Sounded exactly like a person. Really fucking creepy. We started firing when it picked up Corporal and ripped off his leg. God. He was screaming for help. Fucking A. Anyway, we were blowing chunks out of the target round after round and didn't do jack shit. I almost lost it when it started him. That's when you ordered the use of an AT4HEDT launcher? An anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since SCP got loose. Seen those tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. There was significant damage to SCP-096? It didn't even fucking flinch. Kept tearing apart my squad, except to have its torso gone. But it was taking damage. If it was, it wasn't showing it. Must have lost all its organs, all its blood. But it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. Kept tearing apart my squad. So, no actual structural damage. How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? At least a thousand? Our door gunner kept his GAU-19 on it for at least 20 seconds. 20 fucking seconds. That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into this thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. This is when Zulu-9B arrived? Yeah, and my squad was gone. Zulu-9B managed to get the bag over its head, and it just sat down. We got it into the chopper, and got it here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God, or Buddha, or whoever thought I should live. Jackass. We have obtained an artist's depiction of SCP-096's face. Would you like to view it? You know, after hearing that thing screams, and the screams of my men... I don't think I want to put a face to what I heard. No. Just no. All right. I believe we are done here. Thank you, Captain. Chairs are heard moving, and footsteps leave the room. Captain, retired, is confirmed to have left interview room 22.
let this be on record that I am formally requesting SCP-096 be terminated as soon as possible. A large steel cube is shown in the middle of a research lab, which is teeming with a dozen or so researchers. In view of the camera is a control booth displaying readings from the various sensors inside the cube. Fast forward 1 minute 32 seconds. The control booth operator leans forward, alerted to the various readings on the sensors. Approximately 5 seconds later, a steel wall in the containment cube receives a sizable dent bending outward. This dent becomes larger before breaking. SCP-096 is seen bending the steel away, frantically trying to escape. Emergency plates drop on the cube as the containment breach is sounded. The security tape has SCP-096's face blurred out as per containment protocol. Two security teams enter the room as SCP-096 breaks out of containment. Live rounds and tranquilizer darts are fired to no visible effect. Approximately 90% of researchers and security personnel have directly viewed SCP-096's face and a code Lima is declared. The room and surrounding areas are sealed and flushed with a class nerve agent. Approximately two minutes later, SCP-096 breaches research site and travels kilometers an hour through the outside desert, traveling. Helm cam footage from ER-5. Footage from inside of UH-60 shows SCP-096 on the desert floor, moving at considerable speed. ERA listens to the radio's orders, identified as coming from Dr. Dan, a relay. SCP-096 can be seen slowly gaining speed. ERA motions off camera. ER-3 appears, holding a modified XM-500 anti-material rifle. Two shots are fired. The first misses and the second hits SCP-096 in the lower leg. SCP-096 stumbles but recovers. Speed change is insignificant. ERA motions to ER-3 again. ER-3 fires three more shots. The first two miss, and the third hits SCP-096 in the head. SCP-096 falls, skids, and rolls several times, reducing its speed minimally. SCP-096 rolls to its feet and continues unabated. Camera pans up to see eight V-22 Ospreys belonging to MTF Tau-1 flying overhead and pass the helicopters on the same outbound vector as SCP-096. Camera cuts out. Video interview log 096-1-A. Dr. Alexky appears very calm, determined, and answers all questions slowly and deliberately. Where were you exactly at the time of breach? On break. Getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck I wasn't caught in the containment area. Describe your actions directly after the containment breach. I sent Echo Romeo Actual after SCP-096 and alerted Dr. Dan to the situation. We then set upon the task of locating SCP-096-1. Once the general direction of SCP-096 was determined, I sent Mobile Task Force Tau-1 ahead to evacuate civilian population centers in SCP-096's path all according to containment protocol. Video interview log 096-1-B. Dr. Daniel Dan sits patiently. On the table in front of him is what looks to be a set of modified night vision goggles. For the record, where were you exactly during SCP-096's containment breach? In the mountain range, trying to find more information on SCP-096's origins. It was a quick research expedition, so I left Dr. Lesky in charge of containment. He's competent enough, if a bit eager, and has proved himself in the past. This is all confirmed by various related paperwork, so don't go thinking that it I- It was just for the record, Doctor. Now, knowing that SCP-096 is immune to all known forms of damage while in an enraged state, why would you order the sniper attacks from the emergency response team? Why not? If there was a chance to slow down SCP-096 and give MFT Tau-1 more time, then we had to try it. It put ERA in no danger, and the choppers were in danger of being outrun anyway. Honestly, ERA could do little else to help or harm the situation. I see. Now, 
Could you explain this? The interviewer motions at the goggles lying on the table. Yes, this is Project Scramble, an eyepiece we assigned to ERA and MTF Tau-1, designed by Dr. Oleski and myself specifically for SCP-096. It carries a small microprocessor which constantly analyzes the viewing field for the facial features of SCP-096. Facial recognition software inside instantly identifies them, scrambling the image into an unrecognizable mess before the light reaches the human eye. It's quite ingenious, really. And expensive. Very, which is why it's such a shame it didn't work. Audio transcript between MTF Tau-1 and modified EG-3 Sentry AWACS call sign Big Brother. Oscar's in the air, moving at a waiting vector. Electronics online, cruising altitude reached. Uploading program scramble to all camera systems. Cameras online. Big Brother is now watching. What outbound vector is the target currently heading? Target is currently westbound, traveling on... Shit. Yeah, he's on the I-40. I think he's just flipped a semi. Uh, outbound vector is... Degrees by. Next town on this vector is... Uh, I'd say a couple hundred kilometers. Shit. MTF, we're suggesting Echo Romeo begin evacuating the I-40. I don't know how many cars the target has wrecked. Hold on, that's a negative, Big Brother. ERA is reporting that the target is outrunning her choppers. They can't get ahead of them. Then uh, get them to stop the motorists on the other lane. I don't know how many people have seen this thing's face. Helm cam footage from Element 4 of MTF Tau 1 in the town of... Most of the townspeople are gathered in the square, all blindfolded. Helicopters sweep the town. Indistinct orders are heard over loudspeakers from both the helicopters and ground personnel. Approximately two kilometers away, SCP-096 is seen to be coming over the crest of the hills. It tries to slow down on the descent but trips and tumbles down at high speed, crashing through several houses before gaining its footing almost without delay. Several shots are heard, none of which are directed at SCP-096. SCP-096 stops for one second before running into the crowd of townsfolk, throwing many aside and trampling more. More shots are heard as the crowd begins dispersing, the loudspeakers unintelligible under the vocalizations of SCP-096. SCP-096 locates SCP-096-1, a middle-aged man, and the camera views SCP-096 grabbing him before it's hit by a fleeing townsperson and is dislocated from the helmet. Video interview log 096-1-C. The first voice you'll hear is that of Major Jack Wilford, the current commander of MTF Tau-1. I was looking through SCP-096-1's house with my squad. Poor bastard was a semi-pro mountaineer. Took a trip to the mountains. Apparently he took a snapshot of the landscape and just happened to catch SCP-096 in the background. Wilford holds up four fingers for emphasis. Four pixels. Four fucking pixels. I doubt the guy even knew what he saw. He probably just was looking at the picture one day, he noticed an off-collar patch of snow, and went on with his day. How did you find it? Our scramble gear picked it up right away. The lieutenant got the picture and took it down to the chopper before I even got to see it. By then, the damn monster had taken down Big Brother, and... It had peeled open the former Major Striker. All hell was breaking loose. So the scramble gear was ineffective? <laughs> ineffective? The goddamn scramble were pieces of shit that killed the whole damn task force. You know only three people are alive besides me? All because some egghead thought of a state-of-the-art countermeasure of SCP-096's hostile reaction? Those bloody idiots could have just put a bag over the target's head and be done with it, but no. We had to use state-of-the-fucking-art scramble. What did that fucking-
motherfucker called me? Dr. Dan pushes back from the table and begins standing up. I'll show that goddamn son of a bitch what an egghead is after I bash open his goddamn head. Show him what a piece of shit I am. Two guards enter the room and push Dr. Dan back into the seat. He's the egghead that messed this up. Do we need to administer a sedative, Doctor? Dr. Dan takes a breath and smooths his coat. No. No, I apologize. Scramble was really an ingenious idea. However, it was a failure because we do not fully know how SCP-096 worked. You see, as the chip inside Scramble picked up SCP-096's facial features and began scrambling them, there's a split second of uninterrupted light flow to the retina. Computers are fast, but not as fast as light. So, there was a split second image of SCP-096's direct face sent to the brain. It wasn't even consciously received, but apparently it was enough to trigger the hostile reaction of SCP-096. So, with this report of the photograph... That's the most disturbing part of this whole incident. You know when the former SCP-096-1 went to his mountain trip? 1990? That's 20 years of that photo hanging there before he saw SCP-096. Since the brain doesn't need to be aware that it's viewing SCP-096's face to trigger the reaction, there could be ticking time bombs hidden literally anywhere in the world. How many photographs are out there containing SCP-096 just going unnoticed, waiting for a careful eye? As I said before, I want this thing terminated. Now. Video interview log 096-1-D. Chief Master Sergeant Tr- Door Gunner under ERA. Could you tell me exactly what transpired? It... It was done with all its... It was sitting there. In the highway. Just got done ripping open a minivan. Interviewee is silent. And? I'm... West landed the chopper. I got out and bagged it. I put the bag over its head and it got calm. Took it. So the victims in the minivan were the last to have viewed SCP-096's face. Travis? Interviewer remained silent for the remainder of the interview and was released. He was later found in his bunker, having committed suicide by hanging with a makeshift rope. A half-crushed pacifier was found in his fist. Video log 096-1-D. Confiscated tape from news broadcast CNN. The image shows first responders surrounding the remains of a crashed plane over the shoulder of a field reporter. The plane, which seems to be military in origin, has no outward markings designating it as part of the U.S. military. While first responders look for a black box recording, it's thought by police that the plane crashed due to a massive cabin breach in both the cockpit and fuselage. The reporter motions to a large hole in the side of the plane, which several firefighters are climbing inside. Paramedics have only found three bodies, which is odd for a plane apparently requiring a crew of around 20 men. Police have suggested... The reporter is cut off as three super stallions are shown hovering overhead, two of which land and begin unloading troops belonging to MTF Epsilon. Shut off the camera. Shut off the mother... So are we finished here? One last question, Doctor. Or statement as it seems. We find it interesting that there was no break room at research site or coffee. Interviewee remains silent. We think it would be best if you begin talking. Remainder of video interview log 096-1 is redacted. Audio recording, 05 hearing. Upon reviewing your testimony and available footage, and the confession of the late Dr. Olixi, it is the unanimous agreement of the O5 that you are to be terminated for your part in the gross breach of SCP-96. And I thought you would know the meaning of for the greater good. Do not try my patience, Doctor. Given the incident's scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for the termination of SCP-96. Given the lack of personnel with the understanding of SCP-96, the termination will be entrusted to you under heavy guard and the personal supervision of me. Your own termination will be scheduled at a later date.
SCP-096 was written by Dr. Dan, narrated by John Grills. Dr. was played by Addison Peacock. Captain was played by Russ Moore. Interviewer was Atticus Jackson. ERA was Michael Murphy. Dr. Oleski was Jason Smith. Dr. Dan was Jesse Hall. MTFT1 was Tony DeLape. Big Brother was... The sky above port had the color of television tuned to the Dutch channel. Or T-C-A-T-W-T-C-O-T-T-A-D-C for short. Wilford was played by Yuri B Travis was played by Scott Thomas. Reporter was played by Ashley Hall. O5-1 was played by Aaron. Our music was composed by Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your showrunner and editor, Pacific Obadiah, and our producer is Tom Owen. This is a bloody disgusting show. For more information, visit bloody-disgusting.com.